All right, today we're looking at <clears throat> we're looking at a diversity plan for Lincoln Elementary third grade reading. Uh, my name is Skylar Mansfield. I will be showing you the plan and some things we can do to implement this plan. Lincoln Elementary School is a K-5 elementary school. It has 75 employees. Out of those 75 employees, 67 of them are white and eight are black. That's about, that's about 90% of your certified staff that is white and about 10% of your certified staff black. So when we talk diversity, we have to look at, we have to look at the numbers in that aspect and the population of how it has grown over the years. So 2016, 2015-16, Lincoln had 808 students, 442 males, 386 females. 2014-15, Lincoln Elementary had 828 students, 409 of them males, 419 of them females. 2013-14, Lincoln Elementary had 778 students. 363 males and 415 females. Now, I say that because when we look at it, when we look at the diversity, we have to also look among the staff, not just the students. So let's look at the students. 10% 10 of your staff is black, so let's look at what the students ratio is. So, and when we talk about minority for students, we're not, we're not talking, we're talking non-white students. So 2013-14, 125 students, 74 of them males, 51 females, and this is third grade data. 75 of these students were free or reduced lunch. 23% minority. 2014-15, 126 students, 54 males, 72 females. 73% of these students were free or reduced lunch and 25% minority. 2015-16, 127 students, 71 males, 56 females. 66% of these students were minorities and 20, uh, uh, 66 were free or reduced lunch and 28% were minority. Now, the breakdown of free or reduced lunch at LES. Now, one thing about the free and reduced lunch, there's a trend here well, every year, the number has went down. So for 2013-14, 67% was free. In 2014-15, 62% was free. In 2015-16, 57% was free. And we also have the reduced and the pay. And from the looks of it, the pay has went up every year. Now, Free and reduced lunch, some people make a difference on how they do their income so they can qualify. But it looks like here a lot of people are starting to get jobs and families are moving out of the out of the poverty situation and into the middle class and they're able to fund the school lunches for their children. Okay, let's look at the ACT Aspire. The ACT Aspire is the standardized test that we are using to assess our kids. Now, the ACT Aspire took the place of the ARP. The ARP is the Alabama Reading and Math Test. That, is, that was the state, of, the state assessment and it was replaced by the ACT Aspire three years ago. Uh, this is administered, the Aspire is administered to students in grades three to eight and the scores range from one to four with one being the lowest. Three means that the students are on grade level, and four means that the students are above grade level. And two, two means they are close. They are getting there, but they're not quite there. So by showing this, we are saying that a new test was implemented, and let's see the data of how the students achieved on this test. Here, it's probably kind of small to see, but what we're seeing is we're seeing a lot of fours. We're seeing a lot of fours for students for free or reduced lunch. 
on the ark. That's the Alabama reading the math test. And that's for free reduced. 35%. For paid, it was 50. Which is it's a pretty it's a pretty huge gap when you start looking at percentages. Uh 2014, 2013-14, the the ACT Aspire was implemented. Kids was assessed on ACT Aspire, meaning kids had to learn new verbiage and new words to perform this test to do well. And looking at the numbers, 2013, there's a lot of ones, and there's also a lot of twos for the free reduced. On 2014-15, 41% are ones. We don't have data for 14, 15, or 15, 16 for the ACT Aspire, but we have high achievement. We have high achievement when we look over here at the threes and the fours for the ARC for paid lunch. Also, we have a pretty good number, uh, 10%, 10 for the threes and, threes and fours. So what we can look at when we look at this data is it's a new test. Not only is the test new for the paid students, but it's also new for the reduced students. Now, one thing that we do know is that the vocabulary for free and reduced or impoverished students compared to affluent students. Affluent students have a better vocabulary because they're exposed to more words by the time they get four years old. Now, the perception of social socioeconomic statuses in the classroom. Now, a lot of this is contributed to the teachers because the teacher can easily motivate the student. When they are high energy, the students are going to be high energy. So, teachers can motivate students to be high achievers. According to Jensen, research from 60 private schools tell us that the primary factor of student motivation and achievement it's the student's home environment. It's the school environment. Therefore, everything that surrounds the student can influence that student to be a high achiever. Teachers tend to think that students are lazy. Most of the time, the students are not lazy. So that's just a perception. What do we really think? How can we move kids forward? That should be the way we're thinking. Just because a kid doesn't bring a pencil or paper to school doesn't mean that kid lazy or that kid put their head down on the desk. Kid could not, kid probably had no rest the night before they came to school or probably didn't eat lunch or dinner. So we also got to factor in those things. Now, when we start talking about diversity, some kids do not have those things at home. And they look forward to coming to school to get sleep as well as get a meal. But kids from the middle class and kids in the, from the wealthy class, they don't have those problems. So that also has to be factored in before we have a perception of the image of a student. Teachers are no longer expected to be experts who shut the doors in the classroom and work in isolation. That's, that goes to say that teachers can be motivated by using other teachers. If you don't know it, ask for help. Teachers cannot sit back when they don't know it and not teach the students because those students are going to be tested on material. Teachers need to know, they need to have an extended depth of knowledge on the subjects that they're teaching in order to relate it to the students so the students can learn. The goals for the, the, goals for the overall diversity. We want to close the achievement gap between affluent students and poverty students. We know there's a gap because of what the research tells us when we look at the resources that affluent kids have and the resources that kids from low socioeconomic backgrounds have. So we want to close the gap. That's our overall goal. We want to improve teacher relationships with students because it is proven that when teachers have a great relationship with students, teachers can get the most out of the students. Another thing is we want to focus on, on skills that mean the most. So students that, students that are weak on vocabulary, we need to fix it. Students that are weak in reading, we need to fix it. Students that have a problem in math, we need to fix it. We need to intervene and we need to get a program together to where 
we can help these students. Stop focusing on what is not important and things that they're not going to be assessed on. Let's focus on uh, improving the summer to conformative assessment with these kids' uh, vocabulary. Provide professional development opportunities for the staff. When the staff knows what's going on, they can better teach it to the students. That is proven. We have to integrate social, uh, low socioeconomic level students with the fluent students. We have to mix them up because we can't leave students out that are not achieving the way we think they should. If we mix them up and we have the highs of the high and the lowest of the low, if we continue to grow the ones at the top as well as the ones at the bottom, then we can get everybody to a three or a four. The goals for students with low socioeconomic backgrounds, we have to build a content of their vocabulary. That's number one. It is proven that students, students that are affluent and not in poverty, they tend to have 26 million more words by the age of four or 13 million more words by the age of four than students from poverty. Students in poverty, vocabulary, they are exposed to about 13 million words. Students from affluent or wealthy, wealthy backgrounds usually have 26 million vocabulary words, by the, usually hear 26 million vocabulary words by the time they turn four years old. We have to improve nutrition. Children who grow up in poor families are exposed to food lower in nutritional value. And that's one thing, uh, one of the things we learned from the middle class of what people value. Um, people in the people from poverty, when we when we mention food, they value quantity. That's a hidden rule. Um, that's one of the hidden rules of poverty. Kids in the middle class, they value the quantity. So this right here tells us that the value of the food for kids coming from coming from low socioeconomic background is not is not as nutritious as the kids coming from the wealth of the middle class. And that's what we talked about. We have to learn the hidden rules. The hidden rules are things that we value. Um, the education. How do we value education? How do we value food? How do we value clothing? What is our driving force in life? We have to teach kids what to strive for because they don't know. They've never been exposed to it and nobody's exposed them to it. So they just don't know. We have, to, and we have to strengthen the relationship with teachers. Some teachers can get more out of students than others can. So we have to find a way for teachers to improve their relationship with students. Activities to celebrate. Um, Diversity, create visual bullet, bulletin board material. Put the kid's name on the wall. When they when they go from two to three, when they when they go from three to four, when they go from one to two, or however they are achieving, let's put it out there. Let's display it so we can be seen and boost up the kids' confidence. Um, create create clubs and activities with no fees. When we create clubs, kids get to get to mingle and interact. They get to socialize with people of different socioeconomic backgrounds. Um, provide mentors for the community, from the community that helps provide a positive role model. We bring outside people in that have, that have made it from the poverty level to the middle class or the ones that made it from middle class to, to wealth. Let, the, let those people come back and talk with, with our students to let our students know that it is possible and give them some confidence. So when we, when we implement this plan, we are trying to get students to better achieve and, and take a process, take a process to start improving students' standardized test scores. Because if we're going to test them on the ACT Aspire, we need to better set them up to perform that assessment. One is the vocabulary, because when you're starting, when you're starting from scratch and you hear new words, or you don't know what the words are on the test, how can you answer the question? So if we increase vocabulary, we can, we can help get these students to this level. This is the presentation. One thing we really want to do is we want, we want to encourage our kids, we want to encourage our teachers to be high achievers. We want to help them as much as we can. My name is Skylar Mansfield. Appreciate you listening to my presentation.